You know what's fun? Grad school. Science fell in love, so I tried to prove it. It's about two graduate students in data science, Shinya Yakamoto and Ayame Himoto. And much unlike a grad school essay, I won't be endlessly padding out the word count of this video, and instead will refer to it as Rikikoi. One day when crunching numbers, Himoto decides to spring it on Yukimoto that It appears I have fallen in love with you. So hey, if you get pissed at anime pro tags refusing to just nut up and confess, you get it here in the first, um, 2 minutes and 39 seconds of episode 1. So I mean, he does what any normal person would do when a girl who literally looks like this lays it down right in front of him, right? He asks her to scientifically prove that she is in fact in love with him. Oh my god, man, don't fumble that bag! And that's why for most part of the entire anime, Himoto and Yukimoto set up a series of experiments ranging from heart rate monitoring to, uh, running saliva cultures. Yeah, these two people are complete weirdos, and this anime is ridiculous. But it's also my favorite romance anime. No, seriously, more than Wodokoi, more than Your Name, more than Tatami Galaxy, more than some niche 80s classic I throw in here to seem much cooler than I really am, this gimmicky rom-com with a merely 7.36 on my anime list about two extremely attractive people who should be spinning up modeling careers and not slaving away at a university computer science lab for poverty wages outdoes all of those. And let me tell you why. It all starts from the wonderful and small cast of characters who are all adults, okay? All in their 20s. Yes, even her. We good? All right. The small cast of characters that bring their own personality and energy to the anime without overshadowing or interfering with our main duo. One of the reasons I fall off of typical hair and romance faster than Kuino is because they insist on having a dozen different girls, or guys, I don't discriminate, having a dozen different romantic subplots with the main character to the point where the story feels more like a game of whack a waifu than any budgeting romance. Ibarada is the oldest student in the lab and constantly teases the others, doing the internet's work for them by imagining Himoto and Yukimoto as a boy's love couple. Inukai is the hardcore otaku whose experience experience with romance comes from dating sims, so he's most like all of you. Oh jeez, that one was mean even for me. And finally, Kanade, the straight woman who wants to prove herself in the lab while simultaneously echoing the audience's sentiment that Himoto and Yukimoto just need to fuck already! Rather than distract from the main storyline, each of these characters serve as a foundation to their romantic growth and each contribute to their development. One of the experiments in episode 6 involves mathematically calculating the optimal time for parties to kiss, as each of the main cast pair off and lay it on each other. And while unfortunately your greatest Wattpad dreams don't come true, it develops a subtle bond between each character that is rarely present in any anime in the genre. The experiment is obviously a farce, but it's not used as just a cheap laugh, but to give the audience a new dynamic to view these characters. Because even if the romance is merely between Himuru and Yukimura, all of these characters are in this together. And what exactly are they in together? That would be the Aketa Information Systems Lab, which is actually based off of a real lab from the real Saitama University. And this is actually one of the biggest reasons I love this anime. I'm a gigantic fucking nerd, and many of the series that center around math and science typically stretch it to its brain breaking point or just bullshit altogether. I love both these anime, just chill and let me make my point. But Rikikoi actually has the cast confront real concepts such as, ho ho, you thought you were getting out of this without a science lesson. In the first episode, Yukimoto wants to measure if Himoto's heart rate has a significant increase from slamming her against the wall, but we're kindly reminded that not only does there need to be a control study, but a null hypothesis. That being a counterclaim that even if you cannot disprove will be shown to be so unlikely, it might as well be demonstrated to be untrue. And goddamn, I've taken so many stat classes in my life in this anime bear explain the concept better than any professor I've ever had. Or when their first date is framed as a traveling salesman problem, the task of finding the shortest path between a variety of points even goes so far to explain the mathematical concepts of P versus NP hard and oh boy does this shit get me going. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, okay, look, it's easy to see why someone who doesn't have this type of reaction to graduate level computer science topics would have this type of review. But I think the criticism that the anime is just an info dump of all the useless information you miss sleeping off a hangover in college is a little short-sighted. Each character has individually something they want to prove in the lab, and they aren't just guinea pigs or backdrops for the lovebirds. In fact, as time goes on, each character learns something about themselves that Himuro and Yukimura learn about each other. Kanade in particular is one of my favorite characters in this anime because while she's most often trying to stop the duo from acting like complete freaking lunatics, we're slowly introduced to the growing feelings of inadequacy she feels from playing second fiddle to Himoto and Yukimura. They seem like naturally born geniuses, with all the answers of math and science always coming naturally to them. Imposter syndrome is a natural tendency to feel as if you don't belong or aren't cut out for something. It's something I certainly feel when somebody points out a minor spelling error in a single sentence in a 12 minute video over and over, I get it! The world we live in often expects us to meet expectations by comparing ourselves to others, which ironically doesn't 
encourage any personal growth as our attention is focused on being the best version of somebody else instead of ourselves. Rikukoi treats its side characters as real people with real problems and not just meaningless blurs to sell horny plastic figures. Although they could really make some money there. And these character developments don't just stay relegated to one-off scenes, they're fundamentally important to the growth of Yukimoto and Himoto themselves. Yukimoto is originally introduced as a cold and callous robot, the kind of big-brained, emotionless edgelord I would have considered good character writing when I was 15 years old. But part of the reason for him opening up more to Himoto besides those massive massive math theorems is accepting his role as Kanade's mentor. There's a scene in episode 2 where the duo is trying to test if cooking food with love makes it better, and Kanade of course loses her mind over Yukimoto, measuring out ingredients with more obsessiveness than a bodybuilder trying to get shredded, but at the very end it's revealed that this dish was partly to help her out as she grinds out her own research. It's subtle, but it's really the first glimpse of him as a role model and not just one half of a slapstick trope. This dynamic continues midway through the anime where everyone in the lab is tasked with making a presentation at a large conference in Okinawa. Which, of course, is the anime's excuse to have its beach episode, thank you anime, I very much appreciate it, but more importantly gives us a great insight at how each character has been growing alongside Himoto and Yukimoto throughout the span of the anime. One of the professors in the audience for this conference is this giant hard-ass who takes it upon himself to demean and belittle every undergrad who steps on stage, and once again proves this anime is based in real life, and this scares Kanade shitless, causing her to freeze up backstage feeling as if there's no way she could meet anyone's expectations of her. So finally, fully realizing his position as Kanade Sr., Yukimoto calms her down with a single plutonic hug, allowing her to get on stage and present her analysis of the love experiments. It's basic, it's cheesy, but it's also one of the reasons this anime fails to bore me as a romance. Kanade overcoming her imposter syndrome means little to these two laying the pipe, but honestly is one of the most powerful moments in the anime, and to me is why the show is so underrated. Underneath the surface of its ridiculousness is a powerful message about both believing and being yourself. Early on, there's a flashback where a young Yukimoto confronts an isolated and alone Himoto before they even knew each other and he tells her point blank to push forward with her scientific interest and not worry about the peanut gallery. And this is the message that carries forward into the present and not just for these weirdos. Inukai feels as if he's unable to participate in the lab due to his otaku obsession until the professor invigorates his passions by framing his dating sims as a mathematical problem. Meanwhile, Kanade learns confidence in the work she's done as well as her own abilities. Most of all though, Himoto and Yukimoto serve as a message that it's totally okay to be a fucking weirdo and finding happiness in your own way is valid. I personally met my girlfriend at my university's anime club while she was cosplaying. Yes, I'm totally serious. You can pull it in anime club, just don't show up Naruto running in this fit. And learn to shower once or twice a week, please. And while I have to deal with haters on the internet, the ability to be myself and never have to hide who I am to her is where the real happiness comes from. It's really uplifting seeing every character in this show support the two from the sidelines and even play along with their shenanigans, because they know it's where they're going to find their happiness. And even if they aren't totally on board with how they choose to spit game at each other, they independently end up learning something from it. It's become quite in vogue for romance anime to be built on complex love triangles, betrayals, and petty jealousy. And those are fine, I guess. But for me, having two characters who we unambiguously know will hook up and not have to root for every other character's downfall is a more enjoyable experience. Obviously, as a computer science nerd, it would just be easy to say I like Rikakoi because it panders directly to me, and yeah, it does. But come on, how is this any different than pandering to the wish fulfillment of the anime equivalent of white bread with a crust removed getting every cute girl on site? At least you'll learn some cool math and science shit here and not just get rug pulled when your main character imagines themselves getting cut 200 chapters in. Every anime is based off of some sort of fan service, whether it be cool robots in mecha, flashy fights in shonen, or giant knockers in slice of life. Actually, that's in every anime. But it all comes down to whether this fan service serves a purpose or builds up the characters at all, and I feel like that's where Rikikoi really excels at. Everyone is something that society looks down on them for, unless you watch my videos, in which case you're definitely a 180 IQ rich giga chad. But for everyone else, science fell in love, so I tried to prove it as a reminder that those quirks, those oddities, and those aspects of yourself that make you feel excluded are what make you, you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.